Today on Dr. Phil, are you passive or aggressive? I get frustrated with people like this. It's all about you. Exactly. Who's your perfect match? There is one thing that she really needs to do. Take the personality quiz and find out. We did a little hidden camera test on this audience. And see how we turn the tables on Dr. Phil. This expert snooped in my office, and we're going to reveal what it said about my personality. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are we ready to move? Let's do it. Okay, it's always interesting to know what's going on on stage before the show starts. Sometimes Anthony will bring up the party people to get us going, and it's always a certain type of person. I'm going to go out and talk about who it is. Let's see what this says about these folks. You know, I'm always paying attention to what sometimes people don't know I'm paying attention to. <laughs> And uh, today, we're paying attention to people's personalities. And it's a certain kind of personality that comes up here <laughs> and dances around. See, all of y'all are likely to be what we call extroverts. You think? I mean, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, and, and really, 75% of the people are extroverts. They make ex they're excellent networkers. They're really assertive, and you guys would be interested to know that the majority of CEOs, the bosses, are extroverts. Politicians are extroverts. People that are leading are often extroverts. And you guys probably qualify for that category right now. Okay, go sit down for a minute. Interestingly enough, I've been paying attention to all of you guys, too. Because today, we just opened the doors and said, sit anywhere you want to sit. Now, there's a fair amount of research, actually, about this kind of thing. And I watched y'all come in. The middle are often kind of shy people. They just kind of get where they can blend, right? You don't want to be in front. You don't want to be in back. Those of you close to the exit <laughs> have seen the show before. <laughs> Get out of here. It really, people are often in a rush. They look, they, they go in with the mindset, what's the quickest way out of here when this is over? And then the front, you got extroverts. People that want to get up front so they can see everything, maybe get involved. <laughs> Personality's interesting, don't you think? Everybody has a different personality. I mean, we're all unique in some way. And one of the things that I want to clear up while I'm talking about it is I do not have a personality test on the internet. Not on Facebook, not anywhere. So if you see that, eh, it's a fake. However, today, we are paying attention to your personality. So all of you at home, you can go to drphil.com right now. There's a 10-question personality test there that you can take as we're doing the show. And we're actually going to score it for you right there so you can see how you kind of stack up on stuff. Now, we have an expert on the show today that's an expert on stuff. Because <laughs> your stuff says a whole lot about you. This expert snooped in my office yesterday <laughs> with a camera. And we're going to reveal what it said about my personality a little later. There's a tape that I want you to see of an individual that has one personality most of the time and then changes personality when he gets behind the wheel of a car. My horn is my godsend. I just want them out of my way. And if they don't, I take my spray like that and I spray them. And it sounds stupid, but it's, you know, look at him, he's got a wipers on. I get frustrated with people like this. How fast are we going now? 80. And then we're going to spray him. That's me telling him to get over. And some people are just clueless. Oh, it's raining. Yeah, this guy's my nemesis. He's the one I need to catch. Here we go. I aggravate it right now with this guy. I don't care about the cops. I don't care about nothing except catching this fool. And I spray him. I just heard a ding, and I've already got the low wash on. You know, it's very sad. 
but it's a good sense of satisfaction. Okay, are you curious why you're that way and, and other people aren't? Oh, yeah, I'm, that's why I... So you even, even, this isn't something that you just do reactively, you actually premeditate being pissed off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you say, I'm going to get in my car, and I'm going to... You're loaded for bear with your squirters. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Um, you don't live in Texas, do you? No, sir. I'm from Texas. You don't want to be squirting people in Texas. Because you know that it's estimated that a third of all crashes are associated with road rage? And two-thirds of deaths involved with crashes, those crashes are involved with road rage. Somebody gets crazy and starts yeah. jerking their wheel around and that sort of thing. How is he the rest of the time? He's perfectly fine, very calm. Very calm? Yeah. So you transform. Oh, I switch. Yeah, I, I consider myself a gentleman, open the door for my wife all the time and take care of people and, and do the right thing for people, but I get behind the wheel and I'm a different man. I'm and it's for real. Really only if he has somewhere he has to be. Yeah. How are you in the grocery store line? Oh, I love going shopping. I'm good, aren't I? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> food, you know, I like food. I'm going shopping. So if you've got somebody up there that can't find their checkbook or they're on the phone or they're messing around, you, you don't The you, only time, Dr. Phil, is if I'm hungry when we go to the grocery store. Then I'm like, hurry up so we can get home and I can eat. Yeah. Other than that, I'm good. But you don't pull out your pocket squirter and get <laughs> him or anything like that? No. Because, you know, here's the deal. You have to deal with them personally then. Yeah, yeah. Now, is it true that you go through three gallons of washer fluid a week? Minimum. <laughs> I don't even buy washer fluid anymore. I just fill it up with the hose. Yeah. Really? Seriously. Each week? Yeah. <laughs> three gallons of washer fluid. Can I take those with fluid. me? I could probably use them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet you guys don't go through a gallon of this a year. And you go through three gallons a week? Easy. Mm -hmm. So you... I go through a gallon a day sometimes. Do you ever get upset if, if you run out? Oh, I'm pissed. I really do get mad. I'm like, damn, I'm out now. A long commute. But it's, it's an interesting personality quirk, don't you think, that mm -hmm. this is the one place that he does this? Mm -hmm. And I found a common denominator among the people that I've talked to about road rage, and they all seem to have the attitude that the universe revolves around them. Like you have the expectation that when you get on the road, it's supposed to separate like the Red Sea. <laughs> because you are the only one with an agenda. You are the only one that needs to get anywhere. You are the only one in a hurry. And we're going to run on, and people should just know that, okay, Brian's on the road, pull over. Pretty much. <laughs> is that yeah. your attitude? A lot. And I know that speed is a bad thing for me because I did get it pulled over by our lovely troopers and you know when he clocked me I was going 110 but when he clocked me I was actually going 120 before and I didn't even realize it because I get so entrenched and get the hell out of my way that I just floor it and then I look down and go I better stop and I, I did get rid of a vehicle I had a you know Mustang GT and convertible and I was going in 133 down the interstate one day with the top down and I didn't even realize it until I looked down and said this is not probably the wisest thing in the world to do yeah. I wasn't with him. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I understand. That's why I'm here, because I want to understand. But do you realize that you have an unrealistic expectancy set? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. That you pull onto the road thinking, this is supposed to be about me. They should know Brian has arrived. We're now going to run my speeds, my agenda, my traffic pattern, and that that is amazingly egocentric. Oh, I yeah. mean, that's just totally yeah. about you. Oh, I totally understand. The thing I get frustrated with and I allow myself to get frustrated with is when I see people texting, eating, driving with one knee, and I take that personally for some reason. Because that's that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. But I don't Unlike see what I'm Unlike driving doing 133, exactly. yeah. which... Yeah. yeah, exactly. Which is much safer. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't necessarily agree. I'm just sharing with you this is my experience. Okay, so you have one set of, of standards that, to which you measure yourself and another set to which exactly. you measure everybody else. Again, it's all about you. Exactly. It's okay if you do something stupid on the highway. It's not okay if well, they do something okay, stupid. it's not okay, but I don't judge myself. Did you squirt yourself? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I didn't squirt myself. <laughs> yeah. You should dump this on your head yeah. next time you go 133. Yeah. You get my point. Yes, yes sir. If you want to change this, you, you got to do a couple of things. One, you have to adjust your expectancy set. I mean, come on. I, 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 I live in L.A. Oh, I could. Th this is, you, you no. would be a serial killer. I'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> One day. I'm telling you, that's the, you've got to adjust your expectancy set. All right? I don't think so. 
And we're gonna be talking more about personality as we go along. And the test that has become an online phenomenon, you're gonna see what that is in a few minutes. You're gonna find out if it's real or if it's kinda of controversial as well, right after the break. Monday on Dr. Phil. When Noah throws a tantrum, I feel like a failure of a mom. What do you do if you have a child that acts like a brat? Whether you have one holy terror or triplets. Get up in that bed! Hey! Why are you yelling all the time? I don't think I yell all the time. We have a lot of tape. They're saying the blessing! Bow your head! You can brat-proof your child. You want to know the number one thing you're doing to sabotage this child's future? That's Monday. Okay, I want you to look at this dancer spinning. Now, some of you may have seen this before. Concentrate and ask yourself, is she spinning clockwise or is she spinning counterclockwise? And it makes a difference, according to this test, in terms of how you see this. And how many of you see it spinning clockwise? Okay. How many of you see it spinning counterclockwise? You know, interestingly, that's close to 50-50. Now, I believe the theory here is that if it is spinning counterclockwise, you are left brain dominant. And that means that you're logical, you're analytical, you're objective, you see things in parts instead of the whole. And if you're right-brained, it's spinning clockwise. And that means you're kind of a random thinker. You're not as linear. You, you deal with intuition uh, instead of just straight analyticals. You tend to look at the whole instead of breaking it down into the parts. And you're highly subjective. Now, this has become an internet phenomenon. And while it's wildly popular, there are real questions whether or not it really means anything. But it does make you think, and it is interesting, that different people see it in different ways. Now, Dr. Gosling is a professor of psychology at the University of Texas. Hook em horns, that's my boy, okay? <laughs> University of Texas at Austin. Come on up and join us, if you would. <laughs> Sam, good to see you, man. Have a seat. Thank you. Now, you have written a book called Snoop. Tell us what Snoop's all about. Well, Snoop is looking at how we can express ourselves both deliberately and unconsciously in the spaces around us, and in turn, how you can look at spaces around people and figure out what they're like. Some of it they want to tell you, which is very, and they're being authentic when they do that, but some of the things they tell you uh, accidentally, just by the way they leave their, their objects on their desk and organize their books and okay. so on. Okay. Did I tell you some things accidentally when you went through my space? You, you did, and yeah, and you also said some things, I think, you know, about authentic expressions, conscious authentic expressions All right, about we'll what's valuable to we'll get to that later. <laughs> I think that if you track the literature in psychology, there have, been ho there have been so many things written over the years about personality traits and characteristics, but it seems like there is a real consensus that there are kind of five big factors that describe personality right now. And that's what the test is that we put on the internet that gives you some insight into that. I'm not saying that it's, it's perfect. Those five characteristics are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Tell us what openness means. Well, openness is really a, a, a good test. I mean, may, maybe people here could answer. Imagine that you go into a, a restaurant, and are you the type of person, when you get the menu, who points to the thing that you've never seen and say, I'll have that, whatever it is, or are you the sort of person who says, actually, I don't even need to open the menu. I'll have the spaghetti. I like spaghetti. I like what I know. I know what I like. Bring me the spaghetti. Yeah, but what if you order something you never had and it's got snails in it or something? Then you'd well, be in real... So I wouldn't be open if I wasn't willing to do that. That's right. That's one Some of the dimensions. Some people don't care, right. All right, conscientiousness. What are you talking about there? So conscientiousness is more about um, people who think before they act, they plan. Um, are you the sort of person who only replaces the toilet roll when it runs out? Or do you get some beforehand? So it's... So oh. Planning ahead. Now, we met some extroverts up here, mm -hmm. and most everybody knows what extroversion means. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there anything that's more subtle other than just the outgoing, engaging aspect? 
they, these people tend to be uh, more dominant, they tend to be more active, um, and, th and they really get energized by people. So, so, so everyone, many people can come to a party, but it's, uh, afterwards you can really tell between the introverts and the extroverts because the introverts need to go sit down and be alone for a bit to d decompress, whereas the extroverts are energized by it. Okay, and agreeableness is kind of um, like Mr. Rogers versus Simon Cowell. Exactly. Um, it, it's just how agreeable are you? And, and you, you tend to seek some point of harmony, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really are people warm, sympathetic, versus people who are going to tell it to you bluntly and they're not going to try and uh, hide your feet. More, they're they're going to be direct with you. All right, neuroticism has to do with stability, stress, worry. I mean, is this mm -hmm. a bad thing if you're high on neuroticism? Well, it depends what, what kind of a world you live in. If you're in a world full of threats, then it's good <clears> to be very alert to threats. If you're, in a, if you're in a safe world, which most of us now, then you can get very anxious and worried, worrying about things that aren't actually threats to you. Okay, now some of these things that you use to kind of demonstrate this, you have a stamp demonstration. Uh -huh. what, what, tell me about this. All right, well, <coughs> the answer is, so, um, so who here um, carries spare stamps in your wallet or your bag or something like that? Raise your hand high, be proud, if you carry spare stamps. Really? Okay, look around. Okay, stand up. If, if you're a stamp carrier, really, stand up. If you're a stamp carrier, Okay. Really? You carry a stamp with you? This is fascinating to me. You have a whole page of them. You have two sets of stamps here. Did you know there would be people out here with stamps? They usually are, but yeah. Okay, what is this? What is this? What's your name? Marnie. Marnie? Marnie. Okay, would you say then that she is conscientious? She would be high on conscientious, but it goes beyond that. So what's really interesting about that is not only the people who carry stamps, but reactions like yours of the people who don't. And what's... <laughs> 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 and, it, and why it's interesting... Who does he think he's talking to? <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you mean? Well, what it, and what it shows you is the personality is not only what we do, like carry stamps, but it's also how we perceive the world. And I always have this effect, is the people who do carry stamps can't believe the people who don't. They think, well, what, what happens when you need to mail a letter? They're kind of like... <laughs> do, are you, do you consider yourself a conscientious person? Uh-huh. So you, are you kind of planful? Sometimes. Do, do you... Do you do you get supplies before you run out of other supplies? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Now, so, what do you say that it says about somebody like me who can't believe that somebody would wag a stamp with them around mm -hmm. for five years and it goes out of style mm -hmm. and it's not enough money to marry, but you still carry it around? Mm -hmm. Well, the, that does that does shock me. Yeah, and they and they have different they have different standards. You're just supposed to say, oh no, it looks fine. Yeah, yeah, and people just have these different standards, which is why it's quite hard to fake it because you it's hard to see the world truly as somebody with a different personality sees the world. Yeah, for sure. All right, we come back. Are our personalities compatible? I mean, we hear about this a lot. I mean, can you? Is there a, a certain type you mesh with versus Nash with? And we're gonna add a body language expert to weigh in on this because, listen, I believe that a very small percentage of our communications are verbal, and a whole lot of it is what we say with our body and our syntax and how we position ourselves. So we're gonna talk about all of this. You're gonna learn something today. We'll be right back. Now, here we see he's looking at another woman. Look at that face. She is not happy. She's going, what? What are you doing? My name is Darcy. I've been dating Craig for about seven months. Craig's personality is different than mine in that he never seems to stress about anything. She's just really easygoing. Craig's a little bit more progressive than I am. She's a little more traditional than me. I'm a pretty ambitious person. I would like to get married someday. I wouldn't really date anyone who I didn't think was a potential candidate. She's a pretty cool girl. I'm hoping to learn if Craig and I are compatible. Okay, now right now you can go to my Facebook page and you're gonna find something there about Darcy and Craig, and you're gonna get to vote based on what you've seen and what you're gonna see as to whether or not they think you guys are short-term or this could be the long haul. So we're gonna do a little focus group on you guys while we're doing this. Sounds good. Okay, now, 
Dr. Lillian Glass is here. Now, she is a body language expert, and she has looked at this couple's compatibility on a recent date. So let's take a look at this, and then we're going to talk with Dr. Glass. When they're walking in, there's a little bit too much distance between them. And that's not a great sign, especially with a couple that's been together only seven months. You want to see them closer together. You can see right here, she's really uncomfortable. I don't think this is a girl that likes to eat much. One of the things that is comfortable, their feet are pointed right towards each other. They really are into each other, definitely. And look at her eye contact, and look at his eye contact. They're looking right into each other's eyes. They're really connected. I hate food. Okay, what did I tell you? And you can tell she hates food. She's an angry hand. Says a lot. Is the tuna good? Now you see she's closing her mouth. Nope, I don't really want tuna. But she'll go along with it because she's agreeable. She doesn't speak up. She keeps it in. But her body language, her facial expression says it all. Now here we see he's looking at another woman. Look at that face. She is not happy. She's going, what? What are you doing? I'm cuter. She's going to be agreeable, but she's not liking this. How's everything? Tastes it's really good. Yeah. Look what just happened. This is really good. Yeah. She says yes with her mouth, but her body language says no. It's horrible. She bites her lip. And when you bite your lip, that means you don't want to say a lot more. She, she doesn't like this too much. He's speaking up. He's telling it like his. She doesn't want to make waves. But that could be a problem in their relationship. Any time. Start and stop and like, wait, no. Yeah. Uh, I stuttered. I stutter. Okay, hey, now, the fact that she stuttered, it's kind of like she's vulnerable. And so he touched her. Kind of, that appeals to him. He finds that a turn on. As you can see, this is a great couple. They're very accommodating to one another, but there's something major that she needs to work on. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, now. <laughs> so how'd she do in grading y'all's paper? Pretty good. Did you catch him checking out? I did. Yeah. You got busted. Yeah, I know. I love how for that. Were you checking her out when no. she came in? She was wearing a green dress. Yeah. You know. Good answer. <laughs> good, Thank you. Good answer. You're no dummy. That is a good answer. All right, but you thought he was checking her out. Yeah. And you didn't like it. I guess not. I tried to hide it, but they, she caught me. Yeah. <laughs> why would, but here, that's the point. Why did you try to hide it? Because I'm accommodating. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Dr. Glass. Welcome, Dr. Glass, to the show. Dr. Glass has a PhD uh, from the University of Minnesota. You work in communications and communication disorders. You said there is one thing that she really needs to do in this relationship. What is it? Communicate. If something's bothering you, speak up. He's going to love you anyway. So just go for it. You think she is too accommodating? I think she's a little bit too accommodating. And she might blow up after a while. She may be so accommodating, and then one day she may just all let it out. So it's better to say what's going on. You could say it politely like you do and sweetly, but you need to speak up. Why wouldn't you say something to him when you caught him checking that girl out? He says he wasn't, but you thought he was. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we all think he was, but he said he wasn't. <laughs> He was just looking at the green mm -hmm. dress, which again is a really good answer and you need to stick with it. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but why would you choose not to right. say something? I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just curious. What, what, what was your thought process? My thought process is um, someone just walked in. He looked. My instinct, my reaction that you see is kind of like, Rrr, like she's <laughs> looking at another girl. But then I, then I kind of come to my sense of thinking, you know, someone just walked in the door. He looked up. No big deal. Yeah. And that's why I didn't say anything. Yeah. Be interested to see how this one turns out. <laughs> All right, next, we did a little hidden camera test on this audience. You're going to find out what that was when we come back. Okay, now without telling our audience, we kind of put them to the test before the show. I mean, they were not aware of what was going on, but we all know what PDA means, public display of affection. Now, we put a couple just outside in the audience holding area, 
and, well, we let them get frisky. Let's see how it went. Were you surprised at people's reactions? Um, yeah, a little bit. I was really surprised, and I was surprised at one of the comments, too. What did they say? <laughs> um, she was really just offended. And really? It was, it was interesting. I really, <laughs> and I thought it was actually funny, so, and I tried to hold back the laugh, but Yeah, because we didn't want to tell them that we'd put you up exactly, to this. Exactly. All right, so, uh, where's <laughs> Tina? Uh, this made you uncomfortable. I think it made all of us uncomfortable, but I'm a very outspoken person. So everybody was talking about it around us. What were they saying? What did everybody say? Oh my gosh, look at them over there. Somebody yeah. needs to give them a room key. Somebody needs to tell them something. And finally I said, you know what, this is ridiculous. Phil, if you saw it and it made you feel uncomfortable, raise your hand. If you saw it and it didn't make you feel uncomfortable, raise your hand. Really? Well, that's about 50-50. Now, John's our fire marshal. He's over at the podium. John, what did you? What was your reaction to this? It wasn't offensive to me, but he definitely had the posture of affection, and I was attracted to that, and I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have to admit, I was a little jealous. <laughs> but, no, I, I, I thought it was uh, nice. Yeah, well, see, so there's another point of view, right? Well, it's okay to kiss and hug, you know, for a little bit, but I mean, to constantly grope each other, that yeah. was a little too much. Yeah, okay, so, and you were doing, we asked you to do this, so mm -hmm. you were, and you were great sports to do it. Uh, do you need a room now? I mean, because <laughs> sure. you're a little, all right. All right. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk to an extrovert, introvert couple. Now, there's a personality switch that happened after I do. So, is this bait and switch, or what happened? We'll talk about that when we come back. Tuesday on Dr. Phil. A teen mom. You feel like the thing to do is to keep the baby. Abortion. That's the first thing you said was abortion. A concerned family. They're not capable of being parents. I haven't done anything to them. Well, you got the daughter pregnant. Who should raise this baby? If you guys want to reconnect with her, you couldn't be driving her more to him if you were chasing her with a stick. What? That's Tuesday. Then on Wednesday. They've dated for over three years. I want to see a ring on my finger or goodbye. He says he's not ready. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Will he commit or quit? You need to make up your mind. You gonna marry this girl? And a wedding shocker. You found out you married somebody that was still married. With an unbelievable twist. Are you still intimate with him? That's Wednesday. We've been talking about personality today, and there are differences in personality. On DrPhil.com, we have what we call the Big Five Personality Quiz. You can find it there. You can take it. We'll score it for you right there. Now, Carly is an extrovert. Her husband, Aaron, is an introvert. Their personalities clash sometimes, true? Mm -hmm. Now, you guys differ on a lot of different points. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask Dr. Gosling to help me here. Like, for example, on agreeableness, she scored two, and he scored 13. <laughs> uh, what does that suggest in terms of interaction pattern? Well, what, 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 the, real, the real difficult uh, pattern is if somebody is actually low on agreeableness and at the same time likely to say things. It's kind of dangerous because you have somebody who's, who's willing to be, uh, say things directly and will say them, and then the other person who won't communicate backwards. And so it's a sort of, it's, it's, it's the sort of classic bad combination which, which yeah, needs well, to be Well, on agreeableness, you scored two, and on extroversion, you scored 16. <laughs> and on agreeableness, you scored 13, very agreeable, and on extroversion, you scored seven. So you don't say a whole lot, you're not as outgoing, but you're highly agreeable. 
but you're not very agreeable and highly extroverted. So what do you do about this? Did he switch after you married? Oh, yeah. How so? Well, I don't know if it is. But you know, when you're dating, you talk a lot because you don't know anything about each other. So you end up talking and sharing about your childhood and just getting to know each other. And uh, we would do more things and see more people. And he would talk and, you know, interact better. And then, you know, then we got married and had children. And I don't know if it's just if it's stress of everything else that he just doesn't want to think about it. I don't know. Yeah. Did you change after you got married? Were you putting your best foot forward and then you relaxed? Yeah, I got into a comfort zone and to where I wanted to, uh, you know, this is where I want to be. I'm, you know, this is what I've strived all my life to be. You know, I'm married, have a beautiful wife, you know, nice place. You know, beautiful children we're raising and stuff. And it's <clears> just like, I got an autopilot. Just sitting there, it's like, okay, we can just, you know, cruise through life now, we're good. I've worked hard to get where I'm at. You know, let's, let's try to maintain that. Yeah, well, you're honest. You know, this is kind of like a garden. You can put a lot of work into creating a garden and you can plant it and you can water it and you can get it going. And then you go, wow, I got a great garden. <laughs> you can go back up to the porch and sit down. But if you don't tend it, it's gonna fall apart on you, right? It'll just be swallowed back up by the earth. I mean, weeds will take over, it'll dry up, it'll blow away. I mean, that'll be a, a real problem. You can't just say, oh, I've arrived, I've got what I want, I'm now where I wanna be, so I can just go on autopilot. That, I mean, you, you gotta know that won't work. Yeah, no, that's slowly coming to realization. That, yeah, well, yeah. let's speed that up. <laughs> you want him to plug back in, true? Oh, yeah, I wanna... I'm also a stay-at-home mom, so it's nice to have a conversation with an adult where I can communicate and talk and laugh, you know, and... Yeah. All right, so Dr. Glass, what do you read body language right, well, wise right now? It's interesting because when I first saw them sit down, uh, she was very affectionate. She leaned towards him. She put his hands on him, and he just completely ignored her. He wasn't receptive to her affection. And it, that's a big thing because it has to be mutual. When she touches you, you've got to touch her back. You've got to connect with her. He's also she, nervous, too. Well, that, I, <laughs> see, you're very agreeable. <laughs> you're very agreeable. But still we're not picking on him or making him wrong because he's a great guy and he said you were beautiful and he loves you and wants to make this work and that's the beautiful thing he told Phil that he wanted to make Dr. Phil that he wanted to make this this work and one of the ways you can make this work is to be more affectionate to her when she touches you when she communicates with you when she looks at you and that's really what we're talking about and uh, I think that could be a great step in the right direction thank you I got to do something, you know, try to bring something home. She likes dark chocolate, you know, I, once in a while I think about it and I'll stop by the store and bring her home a dark chocolate candy bar or something and say, hey, hon, I was thinking about you today or something like that. To just try to do something that she loves and doesn't really think that I'll remember. Now, did you see how when you said that, all women in the audience went, oh. <laughs> and it wasn't the dark chocolate, it was that I was thinking about you today, right? And so I wanted to, it doesn't take a lot. You, you know, here's the thing, Dr. Goslin, you, you don't have to be somebody you're not, right? It's just, these things are ranges and you can move to the high end of your range and still be genuine to yourself. Mm -hmm. But that means you gotta have some flexibility though, right? Right, there, and there, there is a strong genetic component to all of these traits, but there's still a, a lot of room for variance within that. You're never gonna have a, somebody become a complete extrovert who's an introvert, but there's room to change one's actions, if not your personality. Okay. All right, next, we're going to get to it and see what your stuff says about you. What a spy snooping around my office found out about me. We're going to talk about that next. We're right back. All right, so now we're going into the inner sanctum. I'm just sort of having a general look around the space. Maybe we can even look in a drawer. Very interesting. Sam Goslin is the professor of psychology at UT Austin, and he snooped around our staff offices last night to see what he could conclude about some of the people that work here. Take a look. So we're going into this office to have a look around. Okay, hi. Wow, quite a lot going on here. Extroverts love people, so we see lots of faces of people. What I like to do when I look at photos is to see which way they're facing. They could be the, for the benefit of you, but they could also be for the benefit of others. 
what we see here is a, an incredibly organized office. And, uh, you, you, may, you may think that this doesn't seem organized, but that, that is one of the way people who are very, very organized maintain their levels of organization just because they have a higher standard for organization. Got spare. Do you have a spare roll of this somewhere? Um, yes, you do. Um, <laughs> how did you know that? <laughs> This is interesting because even before, even before you get in the office, you're already learning things about the, the person. This is classic identity claims. This is making statements to others. You are entering a positivity zone, and indeed that's consistent with what happens when you come in. This is a inviting, comfortable, calming place. It's also very, very inviting. It's not super inviting. This looks like quite a sort of a hard-nosed uh, place. We also see, we see the hula, hula girl there, the, uh, and so that said, there's also a little bit of quirkiness. It sort of reminds me of the bad guy in the James Bond movies. The bad guy in the James Bond movies. It's interesting, that's Rich D. Michelle, who's in charge of money and budget at the show. <laughs> He says no to more people about more things than anybody. So, Rich, what's up? Did he nail you? I think he did, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> it made me very nervous. I wasn't quite sure why he was in my office <laughs> snooping around. You, what did you see that said hard-nosed? Well, there wasn't really any sort of thing that made you comfortable there. There wasn't much in the way of softness or de uh, of, of a, a lot of people, personal reminders. There was... There was a baseball bat in one of the, like, <laughs> lying around. The... Were that first necessary? <laughs> so nothing said, come and stay, right? No, yeah. It just basically said, get out. Okay, well, uh, Dr. Gosling checked out my office as well. All right, so now we're going into the inner sanctum. At this point, I'm just sort of having a general look around the space. This is a very, very male office in the sense that there is a lot of evidence for accomplishments, a distinguished alumnus award, presidential citation, something the occupant is proud of. We see uh, sentimental things which may have great value, like a tennis racket and croquet set. So there's a lot of interest in uh, athletic memorabilia. So it's not just playing them, it is, it's an interest in sport itself. We're seeing uh, the symbols for thoughtfulness with the uh, chess set. Very interesting. So let's see what Dr. Phil has on the desk. There is some tea or, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's Dr. Pepper. It's Coke. You see there's these little dog blankets and it's like a whole set of dog toys very meticulously placed in the dog toy basket. That there is even a dog toy basket is pretty impressive. Um, so somebody with order, but somebody who also appreciates the companionship of a dog. So there's a lot of scholarly connections too in terms of both the sorts of the books that are here. Jane Austen, the Iliad. Maybe we can even look in a drawer. This drawer goes on forever. It's the one area where it's sort of slightly less formal and it's less traditional. You know, it suggests a slight uh, discrepancy and nothing to get worried about. Although this is a very big room, it's also a place where somebody could sort of sit and enjoy their solitude. What we see here is somebody who express uh, introversion, but at the same time uh, can uh, engage uh, very meaningfully uh, with people, especially in, in a professional context. Uh-huh. Even Robin wasn't safe. She got a little snoop, too. Let's take a look at that. So now we're coming into Robin's dressing room. Very, very different from Dr. Phil's space. More colorful and brighter and decorated in a very feminine way. The fact that things are laid out around here, it's, a, it's, it's somebody who's sort of spontaneous. This person really does have uh, photos of family. So these are classic emotional uh, regulators here. This person sits at the desk and is surrounded by people she loves and who love her. Things are generally organized, but there's a few shoes scattered around. Again, this is somebody who's sort of relaxed. Look, you even see a photocopied poster put up there. So somebody who's not going to be constrained by formal rules of what you can do and can't do. It's somebody who's just doing what they feel comes to them naturally. So how do you do? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's exactly who I am. I love to be surrounded by the people I love 
by having all the photos in there, and I make a complete mess when I get dressed. Yeah, because you're right. No rules. I mean, she just does what she wants to do. I <laughs> it's mean, right? True, though. It's true. It's I mean, because I noticed in there she had a. There's a painting on the wall, and she had taped something right. onto the painting. Right, right, exactly. Who does that? <laughs> Who tapes something onto a painting? She does. The rule breaker. Well, the picture spontaneous was more rule breaker. Yeah, spontaneous yeah. rule breaker. Yeah. All right, so we did, this is kind of silly, but we did something else. What's your dog personality? Have you ever thought about that? Go to my Facebook page, and you can find out right now. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to tell you which dog personality I have. We'll be right back. But personality doesn't always have to be about disorders. That's what we want to talk about today. So you can take this quiz and find out where you come down on the big five things. And you can have fun with this. Like the, the one I'm talking about now that we're posting up is just what kind of dog you would be with your personality if you were a dog. I turned out to be a German Shepherd. I'm not sure what that means, but I turned out to be a German Shepherd. And Robin, you were what? Uh, weren't you oh, a Lasso Opso? Yes. How cute. Look. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah, I definitely. Love that. Definitely. Look at all the hair. <laughs> yeah. Look at all right. Hair. Now, more fun personality quizzes are on drphil.com. And as I say, this doesn't have to always be serious. You can have fun. So check them out. I really want to thank uh, Professor Sam Gosling. He is author of Snoop. And you can find that book in your bookstores on Amazon.com. And it will tell you an awful lot about the people around you, the people you work with, and yourself, perhaps. So I really recommend it. I've read it. It is good. Dr. Lillian Glass, thank you so much you. for being here and telling us what to pay attention to. We say a lot other with our words, true? Sure do. Sure do. Yeah. All right. All of my guests, thanks so much. We have a great time here in the studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, we would love to have you. The tickets are free. Go to drphil.com. You can click on Be in the Audience. Thanks so much for being here. So long. Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Michelle, you can't play the game that way or you are going to be alone for the rest of your life. You're shaking your head like I don't get it. Are you kidding me, Gloria? The way Gloria treated Dr. Phil today was uncalled. I'm about to cry. I hate this. Can you please refrain from cussing at him, really? Oh, shut the up. I want to slap the taste out of her mouth. Then, I want to talk to this father that got this girl pregnant. It's man to man. What the hell are you doing getting pregnant? Were you having unprotected sex? Plus, be there for the yeah, first yeah. ultrasound. That's heart motion. And the biggest question. Are you gonna get married? <laughs> this is gonna be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here it matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are we ready in the booth? Let's do it. Well, the work with the Dr. Phil Housewives just goes on. I want to focus on the women's choices in men and how I think that affects the rest of their lives. Now, I want you to think about the men in your life and how they affect you, because I promise you they do. Now today, we're gonna to meet Rachel's boyfriend, Angel. I'm gonna hear what he has to say about getting Rachel pregnant because I gotta tell you, I have a problem with that. I think it is irresponsible. Plus, I invited a very special guest who's been anxious to meet the women. Here's what you need to know so you can get caught up for today. Previously on the Dr. Phil Housewives. My husband of 16 years finally admitted that he was having an affair. That empty chair is for her husband. He is coming here today. I hate you so much for what you've done to our family. I believe you both need to be accountable for the 16 years where you didn't have sex. I think it takes two to tango. It's always the one without a man giving the advice. <laughs> it's like, God, you know what? Tango. You really, really are no, nasty. No, no, that's the truth. I don't even understand what you're talking about. You're I so into yourself, I'm... you don't give a 
that's your facts. reality. It's, the truth. it's not the facts. Yes, it is. You don't know the facts calm down. about no, you're gonna calm my down. life. You're gonna calm down. I will drop you like a bad habit. That's classy. Oh, how classy are you? Do you think this boyfriend of yours is the one? I moved in with him. I know you moved in with he and his parents. Apparently a real go-getter. <laughs> you guys have no idea how much she has lied to y'all by omission. I found out two weeks ago that I'm pregnant. What? Wow. I would love to be married one day. It's absolutely a dream of mine. It's been about a year and a half since I've gone on an actual date. I just don't think I want to handle any more rejection. My own father doesn't love me. How's anyone else? Okay, do you know how excited I am to be here? You are so cute! You are amazing! <laughs> I've watched every minute of every tape of every day you wow. spent with Philip, oh and God. I'm just gonna have to tell you I'm addicted. <laughs> I'm addicted. Like, I was just like, I gotta meet these women. I have to. I feel like I know all of you so well. And I just want to say I'm very proud of you. I think you've all worked really, really hard. Are you just as happy and proud of yourselves? Oh, yeah. 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 My whole Good. life has changed. I finally realized I want a husband. I want a family. Like, I finally, it clicked to me. I, love I, I know what I want now. You know, Philip's I'm been right. on the air like nine years. Yeah. And um, I've seen a lot of women, especially a lot of people, get a lot of opportunity to uh, do something like this with him. And man, a, a large part, large number, 99% really know when to grab on mm. and just take in everything they can. When I first came here, I'm looking at, you know, I don't want to disrespect your husband, but. <laughs> oh, it's just us girls, go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, who is this guy to tell me I need to change? There's nothing wrong with me. And then like, honestly, like opening up to him and him not being so judgmental has really like helped me become a better person. I stand up for myself, well I always did, but now it's like... Yes, you do stand up for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, I've been watching. I <laughs> love it. Talk about Philip. Now, is he doing everything that you need to do, or is there something you need from him you haven't told him? Well, I just really don't want y'all to miss your opportunity with him one-on-one. -on -one. And so really, tell him what you need. Work with him. I don't know what questions to ask him. I'm so lost, I don't know what to ask him. Start right there, tell him. Let him help you. He can do it. Yeah. Use him. Tell him you're lost. Will you do that? Yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Look, look, look what the cat drew. <laughs> yeah, look what the cat drug in. My ears are burning. Have you been listening? Some. I don't know if you heard, because I'm sure you no, weren't back no, there listening. No, we're but good. We're good. I think we have an agreement, right? Yeah. That you're going to tell him? Mm -hmm. Girls, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And for Thanks the for opportunity to meet you. Nice to meeting you. All right. So what did you think of Robin? I loved her. She's so cute. Yeah? Yeah. You said it made you think about being married. I want to be, I've been thinking about it all week. I want that part of my life. And so I'm like. What are you willing to do to get that? I mean, that's, that's the question, no, right? No, you're right, yeah. You say you want to be married with kids, then I want you to be married with kids. I know, as sure as I'm sitting here, that what you're doing now will not generate that result in your life. So, how many people do I need to date a week, or what do I need to do? You know how many you date, and how long you do it? Until. Yeah. Okay. And I, I just don't know how to do it. She, she'll show you. She talked about this on tape. Michelle changing her date three times? That's absurd. Girl cancels on me three times. Do not let the I door hit you in the that, ass. That. I'm gone. I think Michelle's making excuses. Um, excuses are actually her wall of protection. He kept, like, like acting weird about the times, and he said that thing, and it just it pissed me off. I can totally teach Michelle my philosophy when it comes to men. You have to go through a million to get that one in a million. So let loose, let her hair down, and climb over that wall with a short skirt, and just be ready. Because when you're ready, I'm there for your girl. Let's go out, let's party, let's get some free drinks on the men, and some food. You're get hilarious. Some free drinks and some food. You're hilarious. <laughs> That's how you gotta do it. But you know what I like about what she said? She's having fun. That's exactly right. She I know. just said, you know what? The, the journey itself can be fun as well as getting to the destination. Well, you, you feel rejected from the key man in your life. Yeah. Let me tell you something about your dad. The good news is 
it's not about you. That's about him. The bad news is it's not about you. And the reason that's bad news is since you didn't cause it, you can't fix it. But you have taken this on personally. You've said, I, I know the pain of rejection, particularly from a male, and I don't want to be in that situation again. You, you can't play the game that way or you are going to be alone for the rest of your life. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm not gonna live my life like that. You have to decide you're not I'm gonna not, do it and behave your to. way out of it. You have the ability to give. You have the ability to commit. You have the ability to care. You have all of those things. Now, does that mean somebody's not gonna break your heart? No, there are no guarantees, but you don't wanna spend your life sitting on the sidelines. No. If you knew, Jennifer, if you knew back then what you know now, mm -hmm. that he was going to cheat on you, that he was going to break your heart, that he was going to make a mockery of what you called a marriage, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that because of the, of the children, because, I mean, that this is a journey you would still embark on. The only thing that good that's come out of my marriage is my son. That's my life. How big a deal is that's that? That's huge. Though? That's would you, huge. Would you, but... would you go through this for that? To, to have yeah, that I would go through any, Absolutely. Of course you would. The difference is you should have thrown the flag on this marriage years ago. Right. I mean, after two or three years of no sex with your husband, instead you just kind of, you know, rocked along. Weeks I turned didn't. into months, months turned into years, and here you sit. Why did you tell Robin you're lost? Coming up. I don't feel like there's anything out there for me. What am I supposed to do? I'm just so scared. I'm so scared. I've never been so scared in my life. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. I had a dry prom, but I've been clean for four months. I want my mom to trust me. You're not worthy of trust. You're doing Xanax, cocaine, and marijuana. Other than that, you're clean. <laughs> The heartbreaking reason for one teen's drug use. I just need to know what the truth is. And another teen's secret life. You want to tell your parents? I'm sick of living a lie. Teenage confessions. The reason I brought you here is... That's tomorrow. We now return to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Why did you tell Robin you're lost? I feel like I'm wasting my opportunity with you because I don't know what questions to ask. I envy Michelle. You, you envy know, me. I envy your life Why? so much. You're independent. You've done a great job. Thank you. You really have. I think you always want what you don't have. <laughs> that is not true, what you just said. What? You always want what you don't have. You want what you have. You just want more, and yeah, that's okay. That's I mean, true. And, and what I'm saying to all of y'all is we don't know how much time we have left together. Don't you waste a minute of it. You're wasting time for you personally. I agree, and I, and I, I don't want to waste time. That's the point. I, I want to know what to ask you. I want to know, you know, I just, my emotions are everywhere. If you were in her situation mm -hmm. where you didn't need one thing from that man. Not a roof, not a paycheck, not child support. Would you be gone? Are you staying because you believe that you're 50 and have no option? Yes. Yes. But for that, yes. you would tell him he had his chance, Kiss hit the my ass. Yeah. Then own that. You're scared. It's scary. <laughs> That's what I mean about wasting time, because I'm going to tell you what I see when I look at you. I see somebody that is, I don't know, spent how many years in a marriage? 16. Settling for what you didn't want. Yeah. And I think you are so damn mad at yourself that you could absolutely scream. You're mad at him. But you look back and say, what in the hell was I thinking? Oh, I'm mad at myself. I settled for what I didn't want. Yeah. And what makes it even worse is I'm doing it again because I'm scared to death. If I even say it out loud, then I'm alone. Yep. I'm alone because he ain't much, but he's all I got. That's, yeah. Now, how come I know that and you're not saying it? Because it's, okay, I don't want to be alone. I really don't. 
And I see what you're going through at 30. And I'm 50 and I'm out of shape. I don't have a career. I don't have a bank account. I don't have anything. And if I leave, I'm homeless, okay? I don't have many options. Jennifer's trapped because she want to be trapped. If you're unhappy, pack your shit up and go. I understand you don't want to be homeless, but you have family. You have us, friends. If I don't have to deal with it, then I can just keep going. That's what you did, right? How many years were you married? 16. How long's it been since he came to you and wanted to have sex with you before you caught him cheating? <laughs> we stopped having sex um, the day I learned I was pregnant. Six days after we were married. 15 years yeah. you walked around that house feeling rejected. I thought that I was just so unattractive. I don't feel like there's anything out there for me. What am I supposed to do? I don't have any money. I don't have a place to go. I have kids I'm raising. You bet you're grateful he's still there. Well, I got these kids, yes. How's he treating you? Better than he's ever treated me. How's he treating you? But that's not saying a lot, is it? No. No, he's treating no, me. No, I mean, this is not about set your standards really low, shoot at the curb, and everything else is gravy. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Where's your What is at? that? It's better than he wouldn't touch you for 15 years? No. Does that mean he pats you on the back when you go by in the hall? What, what does it mean he's treating you better than he ever has? That's not even what I care about anymore. You turn your back on yourself, but there are limits. Yeah. Because there's limits to just how much of this charade you're willing to play. It's hard for me to constantly say I love you and and um, him, he'll call me these cutesy little names now and I just want to tell him to shove it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? I, it just seems so phony, you know? It's like, you don't really feel that way about me. I haven't changed. I'm so scared. I've never been so scared in my life then that's where you begin. You look at me and you say, Dr. Phil, I am so scared, I don't even want to say out loud what my reality is. Do you see anybody here running away? No, but these people, oh my God, I know that they're all bonded, they're having a great time together, and I just, I don't feel part of it because Jennifer, I don't feel happy. I tried to bond with you, but I'm oh, gonna sweetie, be honest. No, you, you are you, great. I, we, I just want to put that, I have tried to bond with you, but yeah. you're very close. Yeah, You I won't am. allow anyone to get to you. So I have reached out to you. Oh, you have, and you've been wonderful. And, and it's not you, it's me again. I mean, I'm just so miserable. And, I, and these people are getting better, and I don't want to bring them down. In your world, right now, is there any other time, any other place you go where you have this much focus and this much offer for help? No. then isn't this exactly the place to be talking about this? Because we're here together, I don't believe anybody can get what they need if everybody else doesn't get what they need. Dr. Phil, I would like you to tell me what you think I'm not putting on the table. Coming up. Gloria, I'll plan you at your own game. I am not playing a game here. I'm not interested in this exchange. I'm not Gandhi. I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm not Mother Teresa. I don't have complete control. I don't have this problem in my real life. The last time you saw Alexandra. Have you remained 100% drug free during this pregnancy? I've been drug free. Her world was unraveling. Can you bring somebody here to escort my mom out? The baby was born addicted to drugs. Now, you're broke, you're homeless, you've lost your children, and even Tony's gone. What the hell happened? Coming next week. We now return to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Dr. Phil, I would like you to tell me what you think I'm not putting on the table. I have some ideas about that, but I would rather you tell me than me tell you. What I know is that you seem to go to great lengths to keep the focus off of what you need. I think it's because the dynamics with some of the women in here became very unsafe for me. And I did not feel well, what's comfortable. What's your ownership in that? I own some of it. 
I certainly don't own all of it. Of course you don't, but there are no victims. I mean, everybody has... I'm not a has, victim. I'm just telling you. It didn't every, feel every, safe. Everybody has a role. I got you. I'm very sensitive, and if I'm going to put my stuff on the table, what it felt like to be married for 14 years, and how lonely and scared I was leaving, and how a lot of men have died in my life. I didn't feel comfortable laying all that on the table when everything I said there was a really negative reaction to. I didn't feel like I would get the support. But Gloria, I didn't say, oh, Gloria, I'm gonna put my foot I was like, oh my God, that's sad. Every time when we gave you a negative reaction is because your comments were negative. I honestly don't believe that I am 100% responsible for eliciting some of the reactions. Okay, well, I wanna play a piece of tape. I was stretching. I put my legs up on the counter because it's hip height. Kim walked in the room and insulted me for no reason. Why do you put your feet on the counter? That's gross. And I thought, uh, well, if we're going to talk about the crimes we're committing in our lives, mine's pretty benign. Why don't you raise your kids properly, Kim? That's gross. I put my feet on the counter, but you don't raise your kids. <laughs> I think she's just a very envious person. I'm See, it's like, how could I possibly okay. put my stuff on the table when I'm so misunderstood? Okay, I just find this you is my, disturbed person. But, but you this is more this drama is my than point. you do put anything on a table. Everything I've been here... trying with you, Alana. I don't know why you just okay, resist and, and attack me. I didn't no, attack stop. you. I just said you, you put up more just, drama. You just, you just, you just. Try not using the you. Okay, stop. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Some way or another, we always talk about in the moment conflict and drama instead of what really is important to you. Did you hear what both these women just said about me? Yeah, and I also... Do you also... think it feels safe to me to, to put my feelings on the floor when I was just called bipolar, loves the drama, disturbed, envious? But we all get... Oh, we yeah, thought everybody... You insulted room. everybody in this room. I think this is a comfort zone, not just for you, but for the whole group. Let's just snipe back and forth. And now, come on. Well, now, you're shaking your head like, like I don't get it. Are you kidding me, Gloria? You're talking to this woman who comes in and takes a shot at you for putting your foot on the counter or something like that, and you go for the juggler yeah, in I response. Did. Juggler is, you're talking about this. How about the way you raise your kids laying in bed and not yeah, taking you care know of what? them? Do you take any responsibility for just going for the most hurtful juggler you can if somebody pushes on you? Rarely. I go below the belt rarely. Oh. Yeah. We should play the tapes. Yeah, you need to see yourself. <laughs> okay, so you know what? I, I believe that what they're perceiving as going below the jugular is sometimes when I point out my perception about them or just give my insight. Answer this honestly. When you say to her, okay, you want to criticize where I'm putting my foot, I'm going to tell you what a no good, rotten, irresponsible mother you are. Mm -hmm. What response do you predict when you say that? A gnarly negative one. What, what do you think? I, I don't think she's going to say, thanks for saying that, Gloria. Let's work this out. Okay, so you do then know and acknowledge that you are taking it over the cliff when you say that. It will, but I don't. That was a moment, and I don't do that all the time. I had been fed up, and she walked in. I was doing my thing. I had made coffee for everybody, and has to shoot a negative comment at me. It wasn't negative. It wasn't negative. No, like, oh, it wasn't. Well, Why is your feet what? on the counter? You have no home training. Who puts their well, feet on the counter that people um, eat off of? Yeah, it wasn't just me. Yeah, I mean, I it was discussed I, I was by like... other women. I was just the one that brought it up. But my point is, you you say the dynamic here has been very combative with some of the people here. And I ask you, how much of that do you take responsibility for? I think some people found their voice when Alana was very judgmental. Other people jumped in and it became like a gang mentality. So you think I influenced the way they think about you? No. No, no, no that's not what I said. Yeah, that's not I what I said. Not Gloria, I'm playing you at your own game. You don't I'm like not it. I'm playing a game it's here. It's a game you're playing, and guess what? I figured oh, it out, so I'm God. playing the same game you play with me. It's exhausting. Okay, but wait, wait a minute. It's exhausting. See, this is my point. 
I'm not interested in this exchange. And nor am I. I. I'm not interested in it. But you engage in it. You engage in it every time. And That's why I shut up, Dr. Phil, so I don't have to f engage in it. it it's not because about Because no, I don't have complete control. <clears throat> I'm not Gandhi, I'm not Jesus Christ, I'm not Mother Teresa, I don't have complete control. And when she says about me, it pisses me off. You say So if I just shut up, then they don't say about me. I don't have this problem in my real life. So you're two people then? So you're this person here and then you're somebody else when you leave? No, if I leave and I'm in a room full okay, of Okay, the world is hostile. not like that, though. The world oh, is God, not I like... love it when you tell me what I the love world's that about, you don't... Rachel. Because, hello, I love wake it. up. I love it, Genius. Wake up. The world is not all, like, pillows Guess and what? flowers and rainbows. When you're 45 years old it and you've made your life and yeah, you, you make your own make, decisions I have made and you my become life now. successful, just because I'm not you get to choose Just because I'm not 50 years you. old or however old you are. I have, created, I have created. I have created life. You know what? Life is what you create it, Rachel. Exactly. So create this. That's what I'm saying to you. Mm. <laughs> okay, Enough that said. was insightful. Do you believe that you are condescending to her? Yes, I do. Okay, and what do you expect the result of that to be? More argument. I'm not stupid. But then why do you do it? What's the point? What do you gain from it? I'm, Nothing, again, be because selfish. I get in the Look, moment and I get reacted. People don't do things in a pattern if they don't get a payoff because... for it. Listen to what I said. You don't do things in a pattern if you don't get a payoff for it. What is your payoff? Coming up. I'm about to cry. I hate this. Can you please refrain from cussing at him, really? This oh, is shut a the up. We now return to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Do you believe that you are condescending to her? Yes, I do. Okay, and what do you expect the result of that to be? More argument. I'm not stupid. But then why do you do it? What is your payoff? What's my payoff right now? You, you there wouldn't... isn't one. I'm about to cry. I hate this. That's not true. You wouldn't I do it. I hate this. You wouldn't say things to her to level her. You wouldn't say things to her to condescend her if you weren't getting a payoff for it. Is it? No. There's no the payoff. payoff. The... There is no. What's the payoff? I'm sitting here feeling miserable. What's the payoff? Well, you not... tell me. Okay. Can you please refrain from cussing at him? Really, this oh, is a distinct. Up. Because you're pissing me off. You don't talk to people like that. I am not buddy. disrespecting Dr. Phil. He doesn't deserve it, and that's really pissing me off. The way Gloria treated Dr. Phil today was uncalled for. You have the kindest man I've ever met treat you with nothing but dignity and respect, and then you turn and cuss at him? I mean, wow. I want to slap the taste out of her mouth. You asked me, me to tell you what's the payoff. It, number one, we're not talking about what really matters to you. Number two... What really matters to me? Maybe it's a feeling of, of power that you get from venting. No, no, no. I feel actually embarrassed, humiliated, weak. Look, Gloria, you don't go stick your hand in a blender except once. Dr. Phil, I don't Because if it feel hurts, you don't do it. from it. I don't like the behavior in myself. I don't like these women. I don't trust these women, some of these women, not all of these women. And I'm uncomfortable around them. I can't talk about the things that really, really hurt me. It's not safe. You choose to condescend to her because she is young and naive she is telling in your view. Because she's telling, she's not making any sense to me. I'm, I'm not, it doesn't matter. You don't listen anyways. It's cool. like talking to a brick wall. Like a, right. like so therefore, she has no value. She I can't, didn't say she doesn't no, have she any can't, value. Uh, you didn't let me finish the sentence. She has no value in talking to you about how the world works. I mean, that's the, that's the tone that I get is don't tell me I've been out there in the world. I'm a single mother fighting my way through doing the battles and you're going to tell me about life? Shut up. That's absolutely 100% what I think. Again, what do you expect her energy for you to be? 
Okay, well, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to contribute to a few people here, so therefore, the whole project's going to go down the drain. Oh, please. <laughs> please. No, that... Please. Can we gain from everybody we meet in life? Absolutely. I've learned from Rachel, well, kind of what not to do. I'm not going to trust the women that I don't trust here. It's not going to change. I'm just done. Did it ever occur to you that the common denominator to every one of these conflicts is you? I'm not saying I'm a victim here. I'm not a fact. victim here. I am accountable. I don't want you to give your power away and, and check your agenda off because of a dynamic you've created with some of these people in this room. I'm not. I was afraid that Dr. Phil wasn't going to ever address Gloria about her craziness, and um, he did today, and I feel much better, but she doesn't listen. I think that you're not balanced. You don't, you need to balance and be calm. You want to talk to everybody about their spirituality and all that stuff. You have the most negative energy I've ever seen in somebody. Do you guys resent that I'm having a conversation oh, yeah. with Dr. Phil? Oh, <laughs> Coming up. Angel's here. I, I want us to take just a minute to talk to this father that got this girl pregnant. We now return to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. I see how tough it is. You know, you're basically a single mother right now. You're a single mother right now, and you're getting ready to be. No, I'm not. Why, because you're going to get married? In the future, to, yeah. To a kid living with his parents. We're not living there anymore. We're mo we're in the process of moving Where are you out. living now? Well, yes, we are living there. But... So what you said isn't true. You are living there. We, no, we are. Yes, we are, but I'm moving forward. Like, I know it's going to be hard, but I'm... He well, he's sense. here, you know, Angel's here. I, I want us to take just a minute to talk to this father that got this girl pregnant. How you doing? Good, how are you, sir? I'm all right, Dr. Phil. Angel. Have a seat. Hey, baby. Hey. I was like gearing up, like, okay, what's going on today? You know, like, ooh, Angel. Um, but actually, when he came out, I see a little young boy, defenseless, helpless. Has she told you what my position was on her being pregnant? Yeah, you And you getting her pregnant? Uh, yeah, you, she's mentioned that, and, um... What'd she mention? That you, I guess, don't approve of it, and that I should have been more responsible with my thinking, and... Yeah, because I, just to be, I'll just summarize it for you. I think it's a higher form of irresponsible insanity for somebody that has no career living with their parents to get somebody that has no career living with you with their parents to get pregnant. I mean, in this day and time with the birth control we have, the the awarenesses and education that we have, what the hell are you doing getting pregnant? We weren't trying to be irresponsible. We were just... You just were. So you allowed him to have unprotected sex with you knowing that you, you very likely could and would get pregnant? Yeah, I think because... Um, I've always been responsible. Now I wasn't because I, I taught like safe sex in college. I worked with Planned Parenthood, so I know all about birth control and all that. I was an advocate for them, so I, I know. And I wasn't because I was okay if I became a mom. Well, the like... cobbler's children have no shoes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was okay if it happened, it happened. Anyway. Like, so I was okay if I got pregnant, I got pregnant. You were? Yeah, I know right now it sucks and I make no money, but I know there's an end result out there. And well, that's but, why it's but, like, but, 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 I'm not well, stuck well, there. You're okay with getting pregnant. I mean, does it ever well, occur to you that you, you say, okay, let me get some financial stability. Let me get some emotional stability. Let yeah. me get a relationship where we've planned and, and we've gone through premarital counseling and we've gotten married and we've created a household and then have a child instead of just getting knocked that, up. Come that on. That would have been a lot better. I mean, what happened to common sense? Now we are taking full responsibility for our actions. We didn't, but we don't want- What does that mean, you're taking full responsibility? That's, that's real nice if you say it real fast, but what does that mean? I'm not saying I have the greatest 
biggest job. I'm not saying that I make the biggest, you know, paycheck, but I'm doing what I can at, at this very moment. That's what a man does, and I love her, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, I don't have I, every... I can't tell you how refreshing it is to me that you have acknowledged this, that you're there with her, that you're stepping up and saying you're not pregnant, we are pregnant. But answer me this, as you think about what stretches ahead, are you just scared to the point of being spitless? Are you I'm, just cotton mouth scared about this? I'm not scared, but I mean, then I'm... You don't know what you're getting into. I don't yeah. know what you can do. That remains to be seen. Yeah. I'm pulling for you. But what I know is what you did, which was re irresponsible. You say in a moment of passion or whatever, I, I get it, but that moment's getting ready to last you the rest of your life. If you're not in a situation to offer this child stability, that was your job to do. You didn't do it. So now you got to work double time to create it now. Are you going to get married? Coming up. We got you with a headhunter. How do y'all think she did in this first interview? That whole interview was horrible. Was horrible? We now return to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Are you going to get married? And I do want to get married. I, that's that's our next step. And that baby deserves the best possible care, which is why we set you up with Dr. Masterson, right? Well, right now we're actually going to my first gynecologist appointment to talk about the baby and see how that's going. Knock, knock. Hello, how are you doing? Hi. Dr. Masterson, nice to Hi. meet you. Are you anxious? Yeah, I'm pretty nervous. Yeah, I'm pretty nervous. And are you taking any prenatal vitamins right now? Yeah, I just take the one a day. That's great. And we're going to give you some samples of ones we like here, too, as well. Oh, okay. Because also taking omega-3 fatty acid helps the baby's eye and brain development. Oh, okay. So we'll add that together. That oh, white yeah. splotch in there, that's the fetus. And so it's in the right place. See that little flickering? Like yeah. That? That's heart motion. It's eating really well. You just don't get yourself dehydrated, so hydrate yourself really well. They get an exercise thing, swimming is great. No massage in the first trimester because there's some points in your body that can trigger like miscarriages. So even during pregnancy, you want to go to somebody who's familiar with that. Okay. No raw meats, um, so no, you know, tuna or steak tartare or, you know. Oh, no tuna at all? You can do fish one serving per week. And the reason oh. being, even though because the fish oils are good, but there's mercury in the fish. Well, when I talked with Rachel today, I saw that the baby was absolutely fine for her date. There was heart motion and all the things that we want to look for at a prenatal visit. And so everything looks really good. You don't have to be wealthy to have children, to raise them responsibly with love and care. But you do need to be able to meet the basics so your parents don't wind up raising your children. We, we, we got you with a headhunter. Yes. And we're, we're trying to get her into a better position where she can utilize her education. How do you think that went? I did my best. Well, let's take a quick look at that. I had an opportunity to look over your resume and certainly have some questions for you. The first one I have is, what are you looking for right now? Just any job where I'm either, you know, a nonprofit organization, a private sector, public sector, anything where I'm just working with the public and I'm out there doing, you know, leadership activities. I don't want to sit behind a desk and file papers, but I'm desperate just to to get something good. You have an interest, obviously, in politics and, and the nonprofit sector. What do you do to keep up on those industries? I read the newspaper a lot to see especially what's going on with our local government. Are you familiar with what's going on in Arizona with SB 1070? No, I'm not. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, oh my gosh, I should be, I should, I wish, I should know the answer to that. Okay. What would you like me to know most about you? That I'm a hard worker and a go-getter. Like, I'm real, I'm really determined, I'm persistent, I won't give up. It's I'm been persistent. wonderful meeting with you, Rachel. Thank right. you very much. Yes, thank you for meeting me. How do y'all think she did in this first interview? That whole interview was horrible. Was horrible? Girl, I'm desperate. <laughs> I'll do anything. <laughs> I thought Rachel's interview was, oh, she didn't sound professional. She just came off sounding like a 16-year-old girl, you know, just trying to get her first job after high school. Well, would you like I don't to know think what? you saw would you all like of to know it. What, well, well but she I'll probably, tell you what, okay. I'll tell you what. Let's if you want to whine about it, you can whine about it or you can learn from it. Yeah, let's hear what she She did said. see all of it. 
Yeah. The woman was there, saw all of it, and then she gave us feedback at the oh end. Let's gosh, see what I'm stuck scared. out to her, and then you can tell us why she's wrong. First and foremost, the most glaring red flag was her desperate demeanor. I wouldn't say anything that she asked me kind of stumped me because I was definitely ready to answer every question. When I asked her about Senate Bill 1070 in Arizona, she had no clue. That's embarrassing. Yet yeah. she was telling me how well-versed in the uh, public sector she is. It's a disconnect. I'm a hard worker. Rachel has a kind of nasal voice and it can be a little bit distracting. Oh what I notice most about her, however, is her lack of articulation and use of a lot of filler words like, um, you know. You know, you know, you know, um, like, 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 um. Her answers were way too long. She could have answered every single question I asked her in probably a third of the time. Say what you have to say and then be quiet. That's always a good rule of thumb. Well, I would say I'd give myself an A. I thought I did this is like one of my, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, best I mean, interviews. So if stupid. I had to give Rachel a grade for this interview, unfortunately, it would probably be a C minus to D plus. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty desperate. It's pretty sad. Well, I mean, wait, wait, wait I'm desperate. Wait, 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 and I show I shouldn't have that, showed that. What do you take away from this process? She's probably right. I, the um likes, I, I said that way too much. Well, I, I want you to study this because she's going to work with you and actually coach you on how to do the interview properly. I think I've just been so stuck in what I've been doing like for so many years. Did you years. hear anything I just no, said or were I you did. thinking it's about true. what you were going to say next when I said what I was saying? No, I need that. Of course, I need all the help I can get, of can course. Can you remember how she said, say what you got to say and then shut up? Yeah. <laughs> Is this the shutting up part? Yeah. You got some really important feedback here. You have excellent credentials. You're not presenting them in a way that does you justice. Yeah. You're going to have to raise your game. Guys, you got a lot of work to do. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Thank okay. you. See you later. Bye. Next Tuesday with the Dr. Phil Housewives. The photographs. The mistress is revealed. In this envelope is the pictures of the hoe that my husband slept with. Let's take a look. I want to confront both of you. Oh, you bitch! You're out of order. I don't care what you say. Alana takes on Dr. Phil. Are you telling me that you're too good to be helped? And the face-off that's been building from day one. I want you to look at each other. Don't say anything. Eye contact. What the hell? I don't want to look at her. The best drama in daytime. Look her in the eye. Is on Dr. Phil. Next Tuesday. Week after week, Gloria goes to great trouble to keep the focus off of what she really needs and blames the other women for her reluctance to open up. And to be honest, her excuses aren't going to cut it anymore. Rachel needs to grow up, and with a baby on the way, it needs to be soon. In fact, it needs to be right now. I'm going to continue pushing these women to step up to the plate and put their issues on the table. Tune in next week and find out who gets a $10,000 surprise from me. Our housewives have joined the Dr. Phil community. You can go to drphil.com, sign up, and read what they have to say on their personal blogs. And you can also find the housewives on Facebook. So check it out and be sure to click on the link to like them. Thanks for being here. So long. Are you ready to have a real life date? A real life blind date. Hello, Gloria. Hi. Cheers to meeting you, Gloria. Well, cheers to meeting you. Thank you. You live here? I do, but I um, travel to Costa Rica where I have a hotel and a surf school. I've been into the stand-up paddleboard surfing. Just did it last summer for the first time. Did you? Fell in love with it. I've done the online dating thing. Did you ever do that? I did. I do think that there's possibilities, but I also think there's complete nut jobs and nightmares to be had. Yeah. Both of which I've experienced. Yeah. I wonder if we were on at the same time. I think I might have winked at you and you just ignored me. That's where nice it's coming line. back. Yeah, <laughs> nice line. What about getting out on some stand-up pedal boards? I would Soon. like that. Okay, what time should I pick you up? <laughs> <About> an hour? <laughs> Is it possible to 
get your number so we can plan this out further? Sure. I think Julie has it. Well, this has been a true pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. How did you like him? I think he is an amazing catch. I think he's a, a beautiful, articulate, athletic man. When you said beautiful, does that mean beautiful to you? Is he became that? more beautiful. I don't know if the chemistry's there, but it might be. It's really I, all I ask of my clients is to be open. I'm gonna be open to it.